I want to talk about some of the problems I've been having with my system, but first I thought it would be a good idea to show you how it's all actually set up. I haven't seen any that are particularly similar, not saying there isn't any, but I just haven't seen that many. So I thought I'd show you a few photos here about how I originally set it all up. Okay, the plan since the very beginning had been to hide the pipes as much as possible. I didn't want to be looking at them, I didn't want to be stepping over them, I didn't want to have to worry about the dog running into them and knocking them out. So the idea had been to hide it, hide everything underground and then to be covered with dirt and everything can gravity feed straight into the fish tank. So I didn't need to worry about it, think about it, and it worked quite well. Okay, so when I set it up, originally, I had these pipes that were coming out of the ground and they go all the way back to the fish tank and drain all the water out. Now, originally it wasn't a problem. The actual height of the water, which is very hard to show you, but the height of the water wasn't high enough for it to actually cause any issues. It wouldn't overflow and it wouldn't do anything else. But now that I've actually upped the flow rate going through the beds, it seems to be overflowing. I'll pick them all up and show you what it's like. Okay, you can see the actual water level on this now. It is up a lot higher than what I wanted at. It's not quite overflowing, so it is when I do that. And I've kicked off all the beds at once, so it's a lot worse than what it normally would be. But this is not water that I want running out onto the ground. So, time to fix it. Okay, so this is my very unelegant solution. I'm going to get the bend pipe and put it through the end cap. And then I'm going to put the end cap straight on the return pipe and glue it all in place so nothing's going to be able to leak out. Okay, admittedly it would have been a lot easier to buy a 40mm hole saw, but I couldn't really adjust the 40 or well, the $30 price just for one little saw, so I'm improvising. Okay, I'm not going to do every single one of them because it's really difficult one hand, but I'll do them all and then come back. And magically I'm back again. Okay, so, still not going to fit, so I've got my little Stanley knife and basically I'll chop off all the little edges trying to cut myself till I got it all very very smooth. Okay it's pretty close to being there but you can still see it's not quite there. So I bring out my trusty little file. A little so filing later and we have quite a nice snug fit around the pipe. Some of you may say but Colin if it's completely closed off you'll get an airlock and it won't actually be able to break the siphon and you'd be correct. So, so now we have a nice breather valve for it. So this will be able to suck up all the air but it will stop the water from coming out and pouring out. Okay this is probably not necessary for most of you but this is the stuff that you use to glue the pipes together. So there's a priming fluid and the cement. The priming fluid just makes sure it all sticks together and the cement sets relatively quickly and holds it all quite watertight. So basically, tricky when you can't hold it all together, but paint it all on, make sure you get all the bits that the sides are going to get, paint all the bits that it goes onto on the other side, and down here. Okay, so now I'm going to put the cement on, which is going to be a little bit awkward one-handed. But basically, it comes out like that. And then just brush it all around. Like I say, awkward as hell one-handed. And then it all just slides straight on. Just got to make sure you're relatively quick with it, because it does set very quickly. And then, basically, all in place. So I've got the sprout, I've got the spout in there, and that goes into there. Now it's not perfectly circle, but I found you put a couple layers of the cement in there, and it seals up any holes absolutely perfectly. Okay, so I put on another layer of glue, and it's got quite a good seal around it, so I shouldn't have any problems with water leaking out anyway. But much because I can, I'm going to do a little run around, drop in all the bell siphons and kick off every single one of them at once. So we'll get the maximum flow going through it and we'll be able to see if they've got any water going through it. So, exciting stuff here. So this is bell siphon number one. Drop you in. 
And now we get shaky cam as we go to Bell Siphon number two. And that one's in. And then back to the original one. And that's my dog wondering what the hell I'm doing. The three. And lucky number four. And look at that little shake to go off quicker. And they are now all going off at once. So I don't know if you can hear that, but I can hear water moving around behind it. But I cannot see any water doing anything. I did notice there was a little bit of a plop of water, which I think was a bit of build up through the top of here. And it did the same with this one here. So I'm contemplating I might rise that up a little bit higher just to make it so it won't do that. But overall, I'm quite happy with how it works. And because I can, here is all the water coming out on the other end. So you can see all the water coming out and flowing down into the pond. And the fish is having fun. And flowing into the other side. And then going into the sump tank at the end. So yeah, thank you for watching.